Lion vs. Tiger. This is probably the most legendary fight in the animal kingdom. Who is the real king? This ultimate catfight has happened more times than you might expect. The Romans pitted African lions against Asian tigers in the Colosseum to the rip-roaring pleasure of the plebeians. A few fights were also staged in the early decades of the 20th century, and on several modern occasions, accidental cross-species encounters at zoos have quickly developed into gruesome scenes. Lions are imposing cats that exhibit unrivaled teamwork among felines. These magnificent predators are world-renowned, and for good reason. The lion is called the king of the jungle, and its majestic mane gives it a regal look. Throughout history, the African lion has represented courage and strength. Tigers are the largest and most powerful felines in the world, and as such, many cultures consider the tiger to be a symbol of strength, courage, and dignity. They are also among the most recognizable of cats due to their distinct orange coat, black stripes, and white markings. Size and Description The lion is the only cat exhibiting sexual dimorphism, which means that male and female lions look different from each other. Males are larger than females. A lion's body ranges in length from 6 to 7 feet, 1.8 to 2.1 meters, with a 26 to 40 inch tail, 0.6 to 1 meter. Weight runs between 250 to 450 pounds, 120 to 200 kilograms. Adult lions range in color from buff to gray to various shades of brown. Both males and females are powerful, muscular cats with rounded heads and ears. Only adult male lions display a brown, rust or black mane, which extends down the neck and chest. Only males have dark tail tufts, which conceal tailbone spurs in some specimens. Tigers vary in color, size and markings, according to their subspecies. Bengal tigers, which inhabit the forests of India, have the quintessential tiger appearance, with a dark orange coat, black stripes, and a white underbelly. An average male Bengal tiger weighs around 490 pounds, 220 kilograms. The Bengal tiger has a body length of 6 to 7 feet, 1.8 to 2.1 meters, and a tail length of 3 feet, 1 meter. Siberian tigers, the largest of all the tiger subspecies, are lighter in color and have a thicker coat that enables them to brave the harsh cold temperatures of the Russian tiger. Males can grow up to more than 10.5 feet, 3.3 meters, from head to tail, and weigh up to 660 pounds, 300 kilograms. Range and Habitat Lions prefer grassland and savanna habitats in close proximity to water sources, such as rivers. They also prefer hunting in open areas rather than densely packed forest. Lions are absent from all rainforest habitats in their range. African lions have a number of subspecies separated by large lionless expanses. Historically, lions could be found across the vast majority of Africa, but their current range has been restricted to a smattering of locations in central and southern Africa. Outside of Africa, lions used to be found from Greece all the way to India. Humans slowly decimated these populations over the centuries. Currently, only a small population of the Asiatic lion subspecies can be found in the Gear Forest National Park in western India. 
Tigers historically occupied a range that stretched from the eastern part of Turkey to the Tibetan Plateau, Manchuria and the Sea of Okhotsk. Today, tigers occupy only about 7% of their former range. More than half of the remaining wild tigers live in the forests of India. Smaller populations remain in China, Russia and parts of Southeast Asia. Tigers inhabit a wide range of habitats, such as lowland evergreen forests, taiga, grasslands, tropical forests and mangrove swamps. They generally require habitat with covers such as forests or grasslands, water resources and enough territory to support their prey. Diet Lions are hypercarnivores, which means their diet consists of more than 70% meat. African lions prefer to hunt large ungulates, including zebra, African buffalo, gemsbok, giraffe and wildebeest. They avoid very large and very small prey, but will take domestic livestock. A single lion can take down prey twice its size. In prides, lionesses hunt cooperatively, stalking from more than one direction to capture fleeing animals. Lions kill either by strangling their prey or by enclosing its mouth and nostrils to suffocate it. Tigers hunt using ambush and will quietly stalk their prey to get close enough to capture it. Successful hunting requires skill and precision. Tigers prefer medium and large prey items, especially ungulates or hoofed mammals. They normally hunt animals that are 200 pounds or more. Behavior Lions sleep for 16 to 20 hours a day. They most often hunt at dawn or dusk, but can adapt to their prey to change their schedule. They communicate using vocalizations, head rubbing, licking, facial expressions, chemical marking and visual marking. Lions are known for their fierce roar, but may also growl, meow, snarl and purr. Adult tigers are solitary creatures and rarely interact with other tigers. They maintain territories, but will travel outside of these territories regularly. The territories of females will commonly overlap with males, but the territories of two males will not. Tigers swim frequently and will bathe in ponds, lakes, rivers or streams. They also use water sources as an escape from the heat and thoroughly enjoy swimming. Now let's get back to our big question. In a head-to-head -head fight, who will win? The lion enjoys the title of undisputed king of the jungle. So the answer to who would win lion versus tiger is obvious. Lions are the kings, right? But I don't think so. No animal can lay greater claim to being king of any jungle than the tiger. Many tiger species natural habitat is in fact a jungle. So it already has an unassailable lead over the lion in the race for jungle royalty supremacy. But before we can definitively conclude which of these carnivorous cats would be victorious in a fatal feline fight, we must cast an objective eye over their respective strengths and weaknesses. Keeping in mind that Siberian tigers are significantly bigger than their closest tiger relatives, this may be a fight that even the most fearless lion would not want. Instead, we nominate the brutish Bengal tiger as the ideal adversary for the lion. Larger than most but a little closer to a lion's overall size, the Bengal will more than hold its own. It's big enough to brawl, but not so oversized that the bout is over before it begins. A Bengal tiger versus a lion could be the perfect combination 
to make sure that a massacre is avoided and the event goes past the first few rounds. Let's assume that the combatants in this make-believe battle are male. Naturally constructed to stalk and stride across all terrains for tens of miles at a time, the tiger could probably be fight-ready tomorrow. In complete contrast, the lion's short supply of stamina means it will have to do everything to make a tiger versus lion fight a quick knockout. Lions sleep or doze for 16 to 20 hours a day. In comparison to tigers, they have small home territories. They don't need to roam as their territory provides great food to attract grazers. However, lions can withstand the sun, so maybe if lion versus tiger took place in the midday heat, they would gain an advantage. The social nature of lions may ultimately be their biggest weakness in a brawl with a tiger. According to the Lion Research Center at the University of Minnesota, coalitions of two to three male lions usually fight as a group against territorial rivals. But tigers always go it alone. This difference affects the two cats' instincts. Considering what I said before, it's likely that a tiger would win. Tigers have a higher average bite force than lions. They are bigger, and they have larger brains than lions relative to their body size. Offhand mentions in the historical records imply that tigers usually came out on top in ancient Rome, and modern fights in captivity typically go that way too. But not every time. Lions and tigers each have their strengths, and the outcome of a given fight completely depends on the individuals, their history, fighting style, and physiology. Siberian Tiger vs. Grizzly Bear Who would be more effective and win a fight? It is quite fascinating that both animals have stunning abilities and belong to powerful species of animals. The grizzly bear and the Siberian tiger are one of the most popular animals that draw the attention of numerous people for its deadly abilities and powerful body. Both beasts are predators at the top of the food chain, so the Siberian tiger and the grizzly bear are the undisputed lords of their respective habitats. The Siberian tiger is a subspecies of tiger that lives in Eastern Asia. They are one of six living subspecies of tigers, along with Bengal, Sumatran, South China, Indo-Chinese, and Malayan tigers. The Siberian subspecies is the largest subspecies of tiger. Grizzly bears are members of the brown bear family. The term grizzly refers to the appearance of the hair on the back of mature bears, which is light brown with white tips, giving it a grizzled or grey appearance. Size and Description Being the largest of all the tigers, this is an impressive hunter. The male measures an average of 11 feet 3.3 meters in length from head to tail and weighs about 390 pounds, 176 kilograms. Females are slightly smaller at an average length of 8.8 .8 feet, 2.7 meters, of approximately 260 pounds, 118 kilograms. The Siberian tiger developed some physical adaptations to endure the cold climate of its habitat like a thick layer of fat and a very dense fur, paler and with fewer dark stripes compared to other tigers. It has a yellow or reddish skin with dark, narrow and widely separated dark brown stripes. The chest, belly, inner limbs and the area around the neck are white. Grizzlies are among the largest living carnivores. They are 3.3 to 9 feet 1 to 2.8 meters in length and weigh 800 pounds, 363 kilograms. 
Grizzly bears have a dished or concave face, short round ears, and a large shoulder hump. They range in color from very light tan, almost white, to dark brown. The word grizzly means sprinkled or streaked with gray, much like the grizzly bear's fur. Their eyesight is poor, and they have been known to attack humans without evident provocation. Range and Habitat This big cat lives in a much smaller area than it has historically roamed. Most Siberian tigers live in eastern Russia and northern China. Their population lives primarily in the Sikoti Alan mountain range. The primary habitats of the Siberian tiger are taiga or snow forest, birch forest and boreal forest. They live in very harsh conditions. Winters are extremely cold and snowfall can be very high during the winter. The vast majority of the population lives in remote mountainous regions, far from any human settlement. Most of their habitat choices also revolve around prey availability. Grizzly bears once roamed throughout the entire western United States, south into Mexico, including the Great Plains and along rivers in desert habitats. A large population of grizzly bears lives inland in Alaska and northern Canada. The southern populations in Canada's British Columbia and Alberta are greatly reduced. Grizzlies tend to like open areas like tundra, alpine meadows and coastlines. For the most part, grizzly bears live alone. Every now and then, they will meet up with other grizzlies outside of mating season and stand next to each other, but not much socialization will occur. Diet The Amur tiger is a very dedicated hunter, and they blend well into their surroundings. While they mainly hunt at night, they have been seen out during the daylight hours to find food. They can travel a large distance in their home range to find food. They tend to look for the larger prey, such as elk and wild boars. They use their powerful jaws to pounce into action after they have snuck up closely to their prey. They are able to take down animals that weigh several times more than they do. Grizzly bears are omnivores. The most commonly eaten kinds of plants are fleshy roots, fruits, berries, grasses, and forbs. If grizzly bears are on the hunt, their prey can include fish, especially salmon. Rodents like ground squirrels, carrion, and hoofed animals like moose, elk, caribou, and deer. They are especially good at catching the young of these hoofed species. Grizzly bears can also target domestic animals, like cattle and sheep, and cause economically important losses for some ranchers. Behavior It is a solitary and very territorial tiger, which usually marks trees and rocks to establish its area. Although there are only a few hundred Siberian tigers in their distribution range, they have the advantage of having vast areas available for searching food, an activity to which they dedicate part of the night. This animal is well known for its power and strength, which, added to a fearsome reputation, stir fear among humans. However, the Siberian tiger avoids contact with people, although it may conflict with them if they are sick, injured, or unable to hunt normally. Grizzly bears use sounds, movement, and smells to communicate. They growl, moan, or grunt, especially when females are communicating with their young or during mating season when male bears can fight each other fiercely for the opportunity to mate with receptive females. Grizzly bears also rub their bodies on trees to scratch and to let other bears know they are there. Now is the time to find out who would win a fight between these two beasts. Both animals are predators at the top of the food chain, but these predators would never encounter each other naturally in the wild. 
Both animals are natural killers, with plenty of murder weapons at their disposal. The Siberian tiger, in strength, it is unrivaled in the Russian Far East. An adult grizzly, like its subspecies, is far more massive and stronger than the Siberian tiger. Jaws The grizzly's powerful jaw closes with a force of 1,250 psi, while the tiger's has a force of 950 psi, which is still enough to bite through bone. But the tiger's teeth are longer and thinner, leaving deeper wounds that bleed longer. Claws This is an important source of trauma in the grizzly's arsenal. They are not as sharp as the Siberian tigers, but factor in the crushing power of the blow itself, and that could be the end of it. Such a blow could simply snap a tiger in two. Tigers are stealthy. They can move without making a sound and ambush and attack from the most advantageous position from their perspective, and at the most unpredictable moment. Bears are resistant to wounds. Whereas the tiger clearly has the upper paw in terms of speed and agility, bears are the armored tanks of the animal world. All its arteries and trachea are protected by solid fat and muscle, and lie very deep. Bears have been known to continue fighting even when bullets have penetrated their lungs and liver. Battle Tactics Without a doubt, the first thing a threatened bear will do is to rear up to look as big as possible. The tiger has one aim in mind – to bite through the neck bone. All tiger experts highlight this as the most common kill technique. But getting hold of the bear's neck is not easy, given the amount of fat and muscle. In my opinion, I put my money on the tiger, because it is accustomed to killing. Tigers feed only on meat, and only on the meat of animals they kill, which is why they have more developed hunting skills. It knows exactly where to bite in order to kill its victim, how and where to strike with its paw. And they are more intelligent than the grizzly. So, in my opinion, the Siberian tiger always has the upper hand over the grizzly bear, and will win in a head-to-head -head fight. Gorilla vs. Tiger Who would win an epic showdown between these two animals? Let's imagine two of the most fearsome beasts ever the tiger and a silverback gorilla going head to head. That would be one of the most intense battles in Animal Kingdom, right? Both the gorilla and the tiger are large animals and are strong enough to give a bloody nose to any potential enemy. So, what happens in a fight between the strongest of the big cats, the tiger, and the strongest of the primates, the gorilla? The Eastern Lowland Gorilla, also known as Grower's Gorilla, is the largest of the four gorilla subspecies. It is distinguished from other gorillas by its stocky body, large hands, and short muzzle. One of the most wondrous and iconic animals to walk the earth, the Bengal Tiger, also known as the Royal Bengal Tiger or the Indian Tiger, is the subspecies with the largest population. It is the national animal of India, the place where its image is part of the traditions and the culture. How do they hunt, and what do they eat? Eastern lowland gorillas are omnivores, enjoying both a plant-based and an insect-based diet. They mostly eat fruits, but also consume berries leaves, and nuts. As for insects, the eastern lowland gorilla prefers termites and ants. Occasionally, these gorillas go after small rodents or lizards. They have been known to travel great distances in search of food. Their powerful jaws allow them to eat fibrous and tough vegetation. 
Adult gorillas need to eat about 18 kilograms or about 40 pounds of food per day. Bengal tiger's favorite meat comes from large, hooved mammals, including chital, gawa, and sambar. But they'll also prey on barasinga, water buffalo, wild boar, hog deer, leopards, wolves, or crocodiles. Increasing evidence also suggests that these tigers will coordinate attacks against rhinoceros and elephants. Bengal tigers kill their prey by overpowering their victim and severing the spinal cord, the preferred method for smaller prey, or applying a suffocation bite of the throat for large prey. What are their dimensions? What do they look like? These gorillas are massive, as they are the largest species of primate on Earth. Male Grauer's gorillas are typically larger than females, and the species clocks in at about 450 to 500 pounds, 204 to 226 kilograms. But there have also been cases where it has reached 550 pounds, 250 kilograms. These gorillas can be 5 to 6 feet tall, 1.5 to 1.82 meters. They have large heads in comparison to the rest of their bodies, as well as strong jaws and teeth. Like other gorillas, they have a thick coat of dark fur, save for their faces and hands. They prefer to walk around on their knuckles. For added protection and warmth, gorillas have a thick layer of dermis and epidermis, or inner and outer layers of skin. Compared to the other eastern gorilla subspecies, the eastern lowland gorilla has shorter hair and teeth, and longer arms. The morphology of the Bengal tiger is beautiful and imposing. It is a mammal with thick legs, strong teeth and jaws, and a coat with a characteristic coloration pattern. In this regard, its skin shows a yellow to light orange color that in the belly and the internal areas of the legs becomes white or cream. Black, gray, or brown stripes run vertically down all its body before the tail, where they become rings. Males have a length of 8.8 .8 to 10.2 2.7 to 3.1 meters feet, including the tail. Only the tail is between 33 and 43 inches long, 83 to 110 centimeters. The weight of males can range between 400 to 550 pounds, 181 to 250 kilograms. How do they behave in the wild? Gorillas are social animals, and the eastern lowland gorilla is no exception. The distribution of gorillas is in tight-knit family groups called troops or bands. These troops travel, feed, and raise their young together. The troops are led by a large male gorilla called a silverback. They also contain two or three female gorillas and their young, and can also include a few subordinate male gorillas. Though the troops are usually small, researchers have recorded groups as large as 30 individuals. Rarely, there are two silverback leaders in a group. The primary traveling unit of these tigers is a mother and her offspring. Besides the early development period, which lasts about two to three years, Bengal tigers are solitary creatures. On rare occasions, a group of tigers will converge in the same area usually because of a plentiful food source. When such gatherings happen, the group of tigers is called an ambush or streak. These tigers, like nearly all other tiger species, have home territories that they rarely leave. When children go out on their own, females typically stick close to their mother's area. During their first year living alone, adolescent cubs visit their mother's territories females more often than males. Where does each of them live? Can they meet? No, these two animals cannot meet in the wild, because they live on different continents. The only place they can have a fight would be in a zoo. 
This species of gorilla lives in the eastern region of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. They thrive in the tropical lowlands and rainforests. Their range has decreased drastically in the last few decades. The distribution of gorillas is also much more sparse because of habitat fragmentation. They used to inhabit a range of about 8,100 square miles. They now inhabit around 4,600 square miles. Many national parks cover eastern lowland gorilla habitats, such as the Kahuzi Bega National Park and the Mako National Park. Data suggests that eastern lowland gorillas occupy only 13% of their former geographic range. Generally speaking, Bengals live in tropical, subtropical, and temperate forests with access to water. Altitude-wise, they typically stay between 660 and 9,800 feet above sea level. However, that may be changing. Today, these tigers live in India, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Bhutan. In India, they stick to tropical forests, subtropical deciduous forests, certain grasslands, and mangroves. Bangladesh has seen a thinning of the tiger population. The animals are now only found in the Sundarbans, which are mangrove forests, and the Chittagong hill tracts. Nepal is home to three small and isolated tiger populations in Chitwan National Park, Pasa National Park, and Bardia National Park. In Bhutan, Bengals live in 17 of the country's 18 districts. Now let's find out together who will win a fight? A silverback growers gorilla or a Bengal tiger? The Bengal tiger and the silverback gorilla are both kings of their own habitats. They are huge in size, strong as well as smart animals. Although their size is about the same, it is possible for the tiger to grow even larger. But let's establish from the beginning that these are two individuals of equal weight, because this is not impossible. The gorilla is also a strong competitor and can challenge the big cats whenever needed. If a tiger attacks a gorilla, the gorilla is not a safe and easy target and can inflict potentially lethal blows on the tiger. These large primates can lift over 10 times their body weight. In a fight between a tiger and a gorilla, a gorilla has the advantage of its strong chest, strong and lengthy arms, and enormous weightlifting ability. Their huge and powerful arms can deliver a knockout blow and can break the backbone. In addition, their thick hide and long hairs can be helpful in their defense. The tiger has the advantage of its speed, lengthy, strong claws, and enormous canine teeth, and it has better maneuverability. A gorilla has an incredible bite force of 1300 PSI. The tiger is close behind with a bite force of 1050 PSI. But at the same time, tiger canines are about 0.5 to 1 inches longer, 1.25 to 2.5 centimeters. The tiger also has the advantage of a muscular body and thick fur. The strong-willed, tenacious gorilla will nevertheless be able to put up a strong and determined fight and inflict severe injuries on the tiger. The thick neck of the gorilla can avoid an easy victory for the tiger. The only serious chance for a gorilla to defeat a tiger could be to strike its backbone with its massive arm this will be very difficult to achieve due to the agility of the tiger. The biggest disadvantage of the gorilla in front of a tiger is that it has no experience of a hunter. Bengal Tiger vs Jaguar In a fight between these two wild cats, who would win? Both the animals belong to the same family, known as Felidae family and Panther genus. 
They are the most popular animals in the jungle because of their unique abilities and giant size. So, if these two cats end up fighting, it will surely be an interesting fight. One of the most wondrous and iconic animals to walk the earth, Bengal tigers are majestic and rare. They're also one of the biggest cat species in the world. On average, Bengals are larger than other tiger species, but the largest tiger ever recorded was a Siberian. Jaguars are the only big cat in the Americas and the third biggest in the world after tigers and lions. These powerful cats were worshipped as gods in many ancient South American cultures. The representations of the jaguar show up in the art and archaeology of pre-Columbian cultures across the jaguar's range. Appearance The Bengal tiger is instantly recognizable, with its orange body covered with stripes which can vary in color from brown to jet black. Every tiger has a unique pattern of stripes. On their underside, they have white fur which is also seen on the cheeks and around their eyes. Their coat color provides camouflage in the habitats where they live. The mouths have long whiskers which help them to feel items. Bengal tigers are equipped with powerful forelegs and large feet with long claws which help them to grab and hold prey. Bengal tigers are a medium-sized tiger when compared to the other six subspecies. The smallest is the Sumatran tiger and the largest is the Siberian or Amur tiger. Males are larger than females. Males measure up to 10 feet, 3 meters long and weigh 500 pounds, 225 kilograms while females measure 9 feet, 2.7 meters long, and weigh 300 pounds, 135 kilograms. Jaguars are the largest felines in the Americas. Adult males can reach an overall length of more than 7 feet, 2.1 meters, and can weigh anywhere from 150 to 200 pounds, 68 to 90 kilograms. Its coat color and markings are very similar to the leopard, with a rich tawny or yellow background with large black rosettes and spots. It has a larger head, more compact body, and much more powerful paws. South American jaguars are larger than those of Central America. The jaguar is grouped along with lions and tigers with the big or roaring cats and is the only such cat in the Western Hemisphere. Distribution Generally speaking, Bengals live in tropical, subtropical and temperate forests with access to water. Today, these tigers live in India, Bangladesh, Nepal and Bhutan. Bangladesh has seen a thinning of the tiger population. The animals are now only found in the Sundarbans, which are mangrove forests and the Chittagong hill tracts. Nepal is home to three small and isolated tiger populations in Chitwan National Park, Pasa National Park and Bardia National Park. In Bhutan, Bengals live in 17 of the country's 18 districts. Jaguars have a large distribution they are found from southern Arizona and New Mexico south toward northern Argentina and northeastern Brazil. However, populations have been substantially reduced or eliminated in some areas, including El Salvador, the United States and large portions of Mexico. The largest contiguous distribution of jaguars is concentrated in the Amazon basin and includes portions of the Cerrado, Pantanal, and Chaco areas to the south. The jaguar is commonly found in rainforests, savannas, and swamps, but at the northern end of its territory, it may enter scrub country and even deserts. Feeding The power of the Bengal tiger is evident when observing its effectiveness at the time of hunting. 
This carnivorous animal searches for medium or large prey, mainly ungulate mammals. In their diet predominates the gawa, water buffalo, sambar, chital or mottled deer, wild boar and other species of deer. Bengal tigers can ingest up to 40 kilograms of food on a single occasion, although they usually consume a smaller amount. Since they cannot follow prey for long distances, they use a strategy that combines stealth and camouflage. In the sunlight, the tiger hides in the tall grass to stalk an animal. When it is ready, it attacks silently by the side or behind the victim, jumps quickly and strikes with a blow with its retractable claws or a bite in the neck. Unlike many other cats, jaguars do not avoid water. In fact, they are quite good swimmers. They hunt fish, turtles, and even caimans, using their incredibly powerful jaws to pierce the animal's skulls. Jaguars also eat deer, peccaries, capybaras, tapirs, and a number of other land animals, which they prefer to ambush at night. Jaguars live alone and they're territorial. They define their area by marking with their waist or clawing trees. Behavior The primary traveling unit of these tigers is a mother and her offspring. Besides the early development period, which lasts about two to three years, Bengal tigers are solitary creatures. On rare occasions, a group of tigers will converge in the same area, usually because of a plentiful food source. When such gatherings happen, the group of tigers is called an ambush or streak. These tigers, like nearly all other tiger species, have home territories that they rarely leave. Jaguars adhere to a land tenure system, much like cougars and tigers. Females establish overlapping home ranges, and female offspring may inherit land from their mothers. Males establish territories twice as large as females and overlap the ranges of several females. Northern populations mate toward the end of the year, but in the tropics, mating activity seems not to be restricted to a particular breeding season. After a gestation period of about a hundred days, the female bears one to four tiny spotted cubs. The mother raises the young for approximately two years. However, it is unlikely that the two would ever cross paths to fight because they live on different continents. What would happen if they had to fight? The Bengal tiger weighs more than the jaguar. The stamina of the jaguar is higher when compared to the Bengal tiger. Hence, the jaguar has more strength to fight with the Bengal tiger for a longer time. Most of the time, the Bengal tiger dominates the battlefield due to its excellent fighting skills and the ability to kill prey quickly. As per the size and weight, the Bengal tiger is stronger than the jaguar. The tiger is brilliant in hunting because of significant size and intelligence. With a single bite, both of them can kill prey, which has a significant size and weight. The Bengal tiger has a 100% chance of winning the battle. With the help of stronger claws and remarkable fighting ability, the Bengal tiger will surely defeat the jaguar. But think of one thing. What if the jaguar and the tiger were the same size? What would happen then? Looking at it on paper, the jaguar seems to have some physical advantages, having a stronger bite force and more muscle density. But let's not rule out the tiger just yet. While the jaguar is the stronger of the two, the tiger will stand a few inches taller, have longer limbs and a longer tail. Obviously, a jaguar's bite force is stronger than the tiger's, and for me, this is what gives them the edge, because both can kill. Then the contest is even. But with the jaguar, its bite force is so great compared to all other big cats that he has an ability no other cat can imitate. 
the ability to bite through their prey's skull with ease. This tips the scales in favor of the jaguar in my opinion. To kill the jaguar, the tiger will have to pin him down, grip round his throat and suffocate him, block the arteries leading to his brain, or pierce an artery. All three of these will be very difficult to do. The jaguar needs one clean shot on the tiger, and it's lights out. The tiger, having a slimmer frame and longer limbs, could cause our jaguar some problems. They like to lean on their back legs and strike with their paws. Jaguars have a similar style, but obviously the tiger's longer limbs will give them an advantage in this department. Overall, it's a close fight, but I'd give the edge to the Jaguar. So let's see who would win a fight between a polar bear and a Siberian tiger. Polar bears and tigers are the apex predators. They stand at the top of their food chain. Polar bears, also called white bear, sea bear or ice bear, great white northern bear found throughout the Arctic region. Except for one subspecies of grizzly bear, the polar bear is the largest and most powerful carnivore on land. It has no natural predators and knows no fear of humans, making it an extremely dangerous animal. The Siberian tiger, also known as the Amur tiger, is the largest of all of the wild cats in the world. Today, there are only about 400 Siberians to be found in the wild. Description Polar bears are stocky, with a long neck, relatively small head, short rounded ears, and a short tail. The male, which is much larger than the female, weighs 900 to 1600 pounds. 410 to 720 kilograms. It grows to about 5.3 feet, 1.6 meters tall at the shoulder and 7.2 to 8.2 feet, 2.2 to 2.5 meters in length. Sunlight can pass through the thick fur, its heat being absorbed by the bear's black skin. The broad feet have hairy soles to protect and insulate as well as to facilitate movement across ice, as does the uneven skin on the soles of the feet, which helps to prevent slipping. Strong, sharp claws are also important for gaining traction, for digging through ice, and for killing prey. The Siberian tiger averages about 11 feet, 3.3 meters in length, with a tail measuring 3 feet, 1 meter. Adult male Siberian tigers can weigh up to 700 pounds, 320 kilograms, while females are significantly smaller, weighing up to 400 pounds, 180 kilograms. Siberian tigers are distinguishable by their striped fur. Similar to people's unique fingerprints, no two tigers have the same striped pattern. Siberian tigers differ from other tigers because they have fewer, paler stripes, and they also have manes. The mane, in addition to their thick fur, helps keep them warm. Habitat and Distribution Polar bears are only found in the Arctic. The most important habitats for polar bears are the edges of pack ice, which currents and wind interact forming a continually melting and refreezing matrix of ice patches and leads. Because of climate change, the coastal plain is becoming a more critical denning area with the decrease in sea ice. While some populations are doing okay, the southern Beaufort Sea population that resides in the Alaskan and Canadian Arctic is struggling to survive, with only an estimated 900 bears remaining a decrease of over 50% from earlier estimates. This big cat lives in a much smaller area than it has historically roamed. Most Siberians' tiger live in eastern Russia and northern China. Their population lives primarily in the Sokoti-Alin mountain range. 
The primary habitats of the Siberian taiga are taiga, or snow forest, birch forest, and boreal forest. They live in very harsh conditions. Winters are extremely cold, and snowfall can be very high during the winter. The vast majority of the population lives in remote, mountainous regions, far from any human settlement. Much of their habitat choice also revolves around prey availability. Feeding Polar bears are solitary and overwhelmingly carnivorous, feeding especially on the ringed seal, but also on the bearded seal and other pinnipeds. The bear stalks seals resting on the ice, ambushes them near breathing holes, and digs young seals from snow shelters where they are born. As their prey is aquatic, polar bears are excellent swimmers, and they are even known to kill beluga whales. In swimming, the polar bear uses only its front limbs, an aquatic adaptation found in no other four-legged mammal. Polar bears are opportunistic as well as predatory. They will consume dead fish and carcasses of stranded whales and eat garbage near human settlements. The Amor tiger needs large prey to survive, and its main prey species are ungulates, wild boar, sicka deer and red deer. In the summer, tigers may prey on smaller animals such as badgers and raccoon dogs. Bears comprise about 3% of the tiger's diet. There are rare cases on record of adult brown bears being killed and eaten by Amor tigers. Brown bear cubs are killed more often and the smaller Himalayan black bear also appears on the Amor tigers menu. Their hunting method primarily involves stealth. They get as close to their prey as possible and leap upon it to capture and kill it. Behavior Polar bears are solitary except for mating pairs and females with offspring. They may come into competition with each other when there is the chance to scavenge when a seal is killed. Polar bears can dive underwater to catch their prey, keeping their eyes open while holding their breath for as much as two minutes. They are inactive for a good part of the time, lying, sleeping, or waiting. Unlike other bears, polar bears do not hibernate in the winter. Tigers are solitary animals, except during the mating season and when the females give birth. They like to be mostly alone, roaming their huge territories in search of food. They are territorial, marking their territory with scratch marks on trees. These animals are most active during the night, when their prey is most active. They can, however, be active at any time. They are very good swimmers and can kill prey while swimming. Now it's time to find out who would win a fight, a polar bear or a Siberian tiger? We are talking about the two largest and dangerous creatures of wildlife. If both come head to head, what will happen? Now, based on the fact that Siberian tigers sometimes do actually hurt and successfully prey on brown bears much larger than themselves, say that the Siberian tiger definitely has a good chance of winning. And large brown bears are not that much smaller or less heavy than polar bears either. So if Siberian tigers can kill large brown bears, which they have been confirmed to do many times, it is very plausible to conclude that a Siberian tiger could win a fight with a polar bear with the same tactics it uses to successfully hunt and kill large brown bears. The Siberian tiger is the largest big cat. It's very fast and moves with great speed, higher agility, a strong, large, muscular body frame, big and powerful jaws, very long, dagger-sharp canines, and razor-sharp, retractable claws that are curved for gripping very tight. Its disadvantages are that they are lighter in weight, not as large and bulky compared to the biggest bears. Their skin is not as thick as a bear's and low stamina level. Polar bears are the largest land mammalian predator. It is so huge and has a very bulky physical build, a very thick, fatty layer of skin 
that is hard to penetrate in most areas. Very heavy total body weight, very strong and large paws. The disadvantages of this bear are that they have short and small canines compared to tigers. Claws are very long, but not very sharp, slower movement and reflexes, definitely not as fast as the big cats, and very little agility. Neither animal is good at stamina. Polar bears overheat quickly, and tigers are built more for brief attacks of aggression. For a Siberian tiger, without the element of surprise versus a fully grown polar bear, it's a fairly safe bet that the absolutely massive size of the polar bear will help it win in a death match versus the world's largest cat. However, if a fully grown large Siberian tiger has the element of surprise, then it might get lucky enough to sever sufficient bones and sinews in the bear's neck with its crippling, incredibly powerful neck ambush. Russians have also found tiger fur in bear poo, indicating these massive land predators do occasionally attack and kill tigers. So I'd say that they are equally matched, with a 50-50 chance of both the Siberian tiger and polar bear winning in a fight with each other. It could go either way, all depending on which animal uses its weapons and strength in the best way to gain the upper hand. Crocodile versus Tiger Who would win a fight? It is very likely that these two top predators will meet at some point in India, Bangladesh or Myanmar. If the Bengal tiger gets too close to the shores of the Indian Ocean, it is possible to come face to face with saltwater crocodiles. What do you think will happen then? Stay with us until the end and you will find out. Earth's largest living crocodilian, and some say the animal most likely to eat a human, is the saltwater or estuarine crocodile. Named for its ability to survive in full salinity seawater, saltwater crocodiles typically live in brackish water near the coast. The Bengal tiger, also known as the Royal Bengal tiger or the Indian tiger, is the subspecies with the largest population. It is the national animal of India, a place where its image is part of the traditions and the culture. How do they look? Adult male crocodiles can reach 20 to 23 feet, 6 to 7 meters, and weigh between 2,200 and 2,640 pounds, 1,000 to 1,200 kilograms. Females are much smaller and do not generally exceed 9.8 feet, 3 meters. The head is quite large and features a pair of ridges that run from the eyes along the center of the snout. The scales are oval and the scutes, bony plates, are small compared to other species. Adults are darker with light tan to gray areas. The ventral surface is white or yellow in color and stripes are present on the lower sides of the body but do not extend to the belly. The tail is gray with dark bands. The saltwater crocodile has a heavy set jaw with between 64 to 68 teeth. The morphology of the Bengal tiger is beautiful and imposing. It is a mammal with thick legs, strong teeth and jaws and coat with the characteristic coloration pattern. In this regard, its skin shows a yellow to light orange color that in the belly and the internal areas of the legs becomes white or cream. Black, gray or brown stripes run vertically down all its body before the tail, where they become rings. In fact, there are not two Bengal tigers with the dark stripes arranged in the same way, but they make up a uniquely identifiable pattern such as fingerprints in humans. Males are typically larger and heavier than females. Males have a length of 8.8 .8 to 10.1 feet, 2.7 to 3.1 meters, including the tail. Only the tail is between 
33 to 43 inches long, 83 to 110 centimeters. The weight of males can range between 400 to 550 pounds, 181 to 250 kilograms. Where do they live? Crocodilus porosus is most commonly found on the coasts of northern Australia and the islands of New Guinea and Indonesia. It ranges west as far as the shores of Sri Lanka and eastern India, all along the shorelines and river mouths of Southeast Asia to central Vietnam, around Borneo and into the Philippines, and even out to Palau, Vanuatu and the Solomon Islands. Saltwater crocodiles are strong swimmers and can be found very far from land. It may also be found in freshwater rivers, billabongs and swamps. Movement between habitats occurs during the wet season when juveniles are raised in freshwater rivers. Bengal tigers live in small islands of livable habitat, surrounded by large patches of areas where no tigers can survive. Most of these populations live within wildlife refuges or sanctuary areas. The largest populations of Bengal tigers are in India, but there are some smaller groups in Bangladesh, Nepal and Bhutan. It may also be present in areas of China and Burma. Within their range, these tigers live in both tropical and dry forests, mangroves, grasslands and more. What do they eat? Classic opportunistic predators, they lurk patiently beneath the surface near the water's edge, waiting for potential prey to stop for a sip of water. They'll feed on anything they can get their jaws on, including water buffalo, monkeys, wild boar, and even sharks. Without warning, they explode from the water with a thrash of their powerful tails, grasp their victim, and drag it back in, holding it under until the animal drowns. The power of the Bengal tiger is evident when observing its effectiveness at the time of hunting. This carnivorous animal searches for medium or large prey, mainly ungulate mammals. In their diet, predominates the gawa, water buffalo, sambar, chital or mottled deer, wild boar and other species of deer. Since they cannot follow prey for long distances, they use a strategy that combines stealth and camouflage. In the sunlight, the tiger hides in the tall grass to stalk an animal. When it is ready, it attacks silently by the side or behind the victim, jumps quickly and strikes with a blow with its retractable claws or a bite in the neck. How do they behave in the wild? The Australian saltwater crocodile is a highly territorial, but not at all social animal. These reptiles are not tolerant of their own kind. Typically, they do not mind females on their territory, but will fiercely drive away rival males. The saltwater crocodiles are night hunters, spending the daytime hours moving through water or sunbathing. Tigers are solitary and territorial in nature. The basic social unit consists of mother and the cub. The male tigers play no role in upbringing of the cub. They scent mark their territories against all other predators. An adult male territory overlaps with several female tigers' territory to facilitate their mating habits. The female territories are more focused on the resource availability and hence are smaller. Now it's time for the fight. In a one-on-one -on -one confrontation, who do you think will win? The crocodile or the tiger? Usually crocodiles and tigers do not fight, but there are some cases. As both are apex predators, any one can be a prey to the other one. Crocodiles are natural born killers equipped with powerful jaws that can grab and hold prey as large as a deer. Add to that, it's an ambush predator, like all crocodilians, since it waits for its quarry to come to it. Sure enough, the croc waits camouflaged in the murky water 
to strike in the suitable moment. The tiger is also more agile, faster and smarter than its opponent, and it's equipped with the largest canines of any big cat and one of the strongest bite forces of all carnivores. Also, they have sharp claws. Tigers are ambush hunters, preferring to sneak up on their prey before exploding into action, killing them with a bite to the neck or back of the head. Tigers are capable of killing five times heavier animals than themselves. Crocodiles can use their armor and strong jaw to kill a tiger. But when it comes to a death match, size and weight aren't the deciding factor, as we know that crocodiles and tigers both are known for their powerful jaw attacks. So once a crocodile gets hold of the tiger, he cannot escape from the huge, sharp teeth of the crocodile. But for tiger's bite attack, crocodile has a defensive system, their skin. The toughness of their skin is indeed amazing. It acts like an armor for them. Crocodile's anatomy are the worst you can get to be a good fighter on land. They can't jump, can't fight on the back, can't use their limbs. The only weapons they have is the big jaw attached to a head that can't turn more than 30 degrees. Compared to tigers, crocodiles are slow as a snail. But Tiger has one more hidden weapon too, their claws. The Tiger, thanks to its speed and agile reflexes, manages to avoid the attack just in time. Now on land, the Tiger has the advantage and hits the crocodile with its paws. Whereas Tigers usually have a much faster attacking speed, so Tiger beats usually in terms of speed. But the crocodile yet has a strong defensive system. That's their tough skin, which can protect them from tiger's claws. All these conditions favor the victory of the crocodiles. This is not always necessary. But could a tiger defeat a crocodile on land? Yes, they can defeat a lot of powerful animals on land. So they can both win. Tigers would win on land, Crocodiles would likely win in water. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button. Until next time, farewell.